Justin Lombin, welcome to the show. Everyone, welcome back to Beyond Homo Sapien Podcast. My name is Paul Tokizolu. This show is all about human evolution and the future of the species. Uh, before we jump in, I want to let you guys know I just wrote a, f a new ebook. So you can go on to beyondhomosapien.com forward slash immune. It's a 12-step cheat sheet to help you boost your immune system. So it's totally free. We've got t uh, 12 different tips in there with a bunch of links to, to uh, bounce you all over the internet. It's totally free. It'll help you stay healthy. Everything from healthy foods to supplements you should take to talking more about spirituality and how that's connected with your immune system. So go check it out, beyondhomosapien.com forward slash immune, just launched yesterday. So go check it out. Justin, what is up, man? I wanna get into talking about the coronavirus and how it's reshaping our world and what it's gonna be doing to our economy. But before we do that, tell us a little bit about yourself. What have you been doing in digital marketing lately? What have you been working on in your own personal life? And you know, where are you, where are you going uh, moving forward? Yeah, thanks brother, I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, so I mean, I've been, you know, um, selling stuff online since 1998. Um, so I've been at this game for a long, long time in terms of marketing and, and uh, business. And so, um, you know, I have several businesses. One is a Facebook ads agency, Zenfusion. Um, you can check them out at zenfusion.com. I also own the uh, software as a service company, SyncSumo, where we connect the Facebook ads platform with various email marketing and CRM systems. And I own quite a few different um, e-commerce brands uh, in different spaces, and we can talk about that. And uh, I also do uh, business coaching. I've got uh, a business acceleration life cycle that I've built, built and tweaked over the last 12 years, and um, I help businesses exponentially grow uh, systematically and very easily. So, uh, and then the biggest thing that I'm focused on now is an extension of that, which is my business transformation experience, which I'm going to be um, having an event in Costa Rica uh, the last week in June of this year and uh, the first week in August. Um, so we're going to be taking you through, it's a full week, uh, taking you through two days of the journey of you, really helping you unravel uh, the subconscious and the programming that you have within you that's blocking your ability to really grow your business and see yourself in a, do, a new light. And then we, we really uh, break into that business acceleration life cycle to show you the seven step process to exponentially grow your business and, and all while having ama an amazing time in Costa Rica. So, This is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show was because you're someone, we connected through Facebook and a few different Facebook groups uh, like Scott Oldford's group, shout out Scott Oldford. But uh, yeah. it was, uh, it was, I liked that you, you're someone who has a lot of experience here in kind of the, the material world, I guess you could say, of running businesses, starting things. But you also had a really good understanding of spirituality. And we, we were talking about the Akashic Records, I think, once. And we are talking about using Gans Plasma and a few other kind of uh, esoteric ideas when it comes to, you know, planning. Energy. I think we're talking about growing hemp briefly yeah. or something. Talk, using, uh, so, yeah, so I, we connected on a number of different things. <laughs> and I just thought with where this is all going, you're someone who seems to have a good understanding of both the the emerging digital economy, because we're seeing the whole world shifting online more than ever. Yeah. And a lot of people losing their jobs and a lot of people are looking to start businesses online or work online in general. So, um, so I feel like you have that experience. And then on the other hand, you have a really good understanding of kind of the, the spiritual collective energies that are happening here. Yeah. Um, so I feel like you're uniquely qualified to discuss <laughs> what's going okay. on here. Um, and just tell us a little bit, like, what are you observing here with the coronavirus? What's going on? Um, what's your take on the overall situation? And um, I guess something that I see that I just want to discuss before uh, to, to kind of further embellish this question is um, I see two camps. I don't know about you, but I see like two camps of thought that seem very polarized on social media. One camp is like, oh, my God, guys, the new world order is cracking down. This is it. Martial law is about to be declared at any moment. We're all going to be, Bill Gates is going to personally vaccinate everyone and uh -huh. install a computer chip underneath their skin and then Satan will win. Uh -huh. um, that's one camp. And then the other camp is like, guys, praise be. This is the dawning of the new age. This is heaven on earth. This is the age of Aquarius. This is the, the aliens, the UFOs are going to come back any moment now and invite <laughs> us into the galactic council or whatever. Uh -huh. So 
those are very opposite fucking points. And um, <laughs> I feel like the answer is somewhere in the middle, but I want to say like, where do you fall on that spectrum? Where, where do you see yourself? Are you in the, 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 this is terrible camp or this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to us? Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, just the, the just that topic alone, uh, it, it, it based, it's all based on your frequency, right? So if you're in low, um, low frequency activities or you're still eating the meat and you're still, you know, just doing things that um, are serving yourself and um, this is the, you know, the behaviors of, of the beast, essentially, you're going to see the world as, you know, we're all going to be vaccinated. NWO is here. It's, you know, that we, we knew this was coming 30 years ago and, you know, that's, that's where you're going to resonate. And, and that's what's happening. That's really, this is like a mixing pot, both in the physical realm and the, um, the higher realms where basically you're, you're getting an opportunity to choose. This is the purge. This is the, the humanity's purge before basically you make a decision on what timeline you actually want to play out. Mm -hmm. And so there is a big opportunity. And I think for the, the stuff that's going to come um, to humanity in terms of this purge, and we can dive deep into that, um, they're going to have to reflect on themselves, right? As within, so without. So if you get the, if you get, you know, the information that I see that's coming and you're not ready for it, then you're probably going to start reflecting on your own life about what it really was about and what choices you made. And you have a window of time before the solar flash, December 21st of this year, um, to, 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 to move across timelines, right? And maybe you're in the, the higher timeline, the new earth timeline, which is where I, I resonate. Um, but, you know, you, you start to to lose control emotionally and you dive back down into um, some low frequency activity and put yourself back in that 3d, you know, duality timeline. Um, it's, it's, it's a while, it's the wild, wild west energetically right now. And, and it's important yeah. that um, we stay in neutrality basically. Yeah. Having an understanding of energy and how it works in our, in our world is huge and understanding that, makes, that, that we're all a collective mind in a sense, an infinite living mind. Of sorts. Have you studied uh, hermetic philosophy too much? Yeah, all of it, brother. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Me too. So, um, have you read the Kabbalion? Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, it's one of my probably favorites. probably like ten times. I love it. Um, well, then, uh, yeah, there's much we have in common then. But um, so, in the Kabbalion, it talks about this idea of existing at a higher plane of of correspondence. In other words, like being able to almost remove yourself out of the plane of existence where everyone else is and being able to exist at a, at a higher level where you are observing what they say is the swing of the pendulum back. And that's kind of what we're experiencing. That's it, brother. The economy. That's it. the economy was doing, like, here's an example. The economy was doing better than it's ever done. Ever, you know, Trump was like, oh my God, this is, we're the fucking best. We were, we're winning, we're, we were winning, <laughs> we were winning so big in the economy. Um, and, um, but ultimately is unsustainable. And that's what we found out. So now what we're seeing is we're seeing the backward shift of the pendulum back to when the economy was not doing so hot. And there's the opportunity for people to either get swept with the pendulum emotionally mm -hmm. backwards into that terrible past where there is less opportunity, but you can also exist at a higher plane where you are observing what's going on and you are being mindful and acting in a way where you do not experience that backward shift. And you are more, uh, you're, you're, you're at a higher level than where the pendulum is swinging. So it doesn't affect you. Absolutely. That's the, the theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's where I operate, right? I'm, I'm the observer in neutrality, watching the script play out. We're in a game. You're, you're, this is a script that's, it's playing out and it's playing out based on your frequency. So whatever you, whatever you resonate at is what you're going to reflect. You're a projector of the reality that you think you're living in. Right. So, you know, you, the sooner you can realize that, you know, you can be above that pendulum swing. The emotion is a, is a method of this game to extract energy from you. So if you get too attached emotionally, that's the, the key is attachment, right? I'm out here. I'm loving on people. I have tears of joy some days. You know, we, we have emotion and that's how we experience this game. 
but I don't get attached to anything. Okay. Right. And I've removed all attachments, you know, even down to, I don't drink coffee. I don't do this. I don't, you know, I don't have these ritualistic habits that are based on attachments, you know, even with relationships, like I love you, but you know, I'm not, I'm going to be fine if, if you weren't here yet tomorrow, you know, um, it, it's all about attachments. And then, then you can stay in neutrality. You can see the pendulum swinging and then, you know, you can do your part, you know, and then I can focus more on my own power and uniqueness and you know for me that's to help other source players in this game you know cross that bridge to new earth because right. it, that's where we're at right now you know i'm standing on the 4d bridge saying come on let's get out of this 3d duality stuff and let's head to new earth um and I, i've got the tools to help you do that you know so i uh when you're talking about this stuff there's a lot of people will be listening to this thinking we're crazy being like what the hell are these guys talking about <laughs> Um, can you break down like what do you mean when you're saying a new earth what does that mean for you what does that look what does that actually look like yeah so i mean basically again this this that's the challenge is most people don't know who they are or where they are okay so one you have to realize that you're just you're a fractal of source which is all that exists and you're inside of a vessel this body is simply a vessel that you were given in this game to experience it okay and you're much much more powerful than you think you are because they've been programming us since birth and trying to you know basically teach us that we're nothing more than a meat suit walking around here it's going to fall into a six foot hole when we're done that's what they've try tried to tell us yet yet the whole time they're staring at us wondering what we're going to do next well then why if this if we're nothing and we're just going to fall into the ground then why were they so concerned about what we do and how we do it through our entire lives it's because you have much much more power than you realize mm -hmm. and as soon as you start to unravel that subconscious programming that they've shoved into your brain through religion through society through parenting through the school system it's so layered up to try and keep us under control because if we came together and realized how much power we truly had, then they're toast. They're parasites. You know, these people are parasites and um, they understand black magic and they've used magic against us. Right. And so first you got to know who you are. You're not just the, the vessel. You're not just the vessel. You're actually much, much more powerful than that. You're a fractal of source energy. You're loaded with potential and you just haven't unlocked it. Okay. And then knowing where you are, this is this is an illusionary dream game that we're in. We 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 created this game for ourselves to come in and experience it, because wow. where we were in the physical realm wasn't as as, as exciting as we want it to be. So right. once you realize that this is a game of energy, frequency, and vibration, then you know, and you know that you're in an illusionary dream that basically feels very real because we can knock on a table and we can you know, uh, pick up a drink and, and, and pour it down our throats. I mean, that's the part of the illusion is like, of course, you know, we're, we're, at, we've done, we've played these games before. And so we needed to create a game that was very, you know, real. It made it feel like when we were in the vessel and we were in the experience that, that it, it was real, it wasn't just a dream. Right. Right. And, and so, you know, once you know, you're in a, a dream state and that you actually reflect out based on your frequency, the reality that you live in. And, and then you understand the cycles of this game, right? So time and space really doesn't exist. It's a, it's a component of uh, the mind virus. Essentially it's like we've created time and space. Okay. And when you can back that up, yes, this system that we're in this electromagnetic system that we're in that we call earth, it has cycles, the seasons, right? And once we can step into that, this, th what's happening here is a huge cycle, a 26,500 year cycle that we're coming up on going from the dark ages into the golden ages. And that's through the age of Aquarius. So we're, we're shifting over this whole idea of Christ consciousness has really very little to do with a man named Jesus. It has a lot more to do with what's inside of you, raising the chrism oil and, and, really exposing the Christ consciousness within you. And that's what this is, the crossover. We're crossing over the cross. We're crossing over from the dark ages into the golden ages of, and it starts with the age of Aquarius astrologically. Right. So a couple of things that I want to touch on for people who aren't, uh, aren't as 
aren't in the know about this kind of stuff or how energy works or this kind of uh, way of looking at the world. Um, like I'm, uh, I've been an occultist for a couple of years and I've studied this pretty, pretty in depth, just learning. The more you study it, the more you realize there's so much to, to learn. <laughs> yeah, you got but, it. Um, so it's uh, in the secret teachings of magic in these different magical traditions, whether it's like the Golden Dawn or Enochian magic or whatever you want to talk about, there's kind of this theme that there is a secret fifth element uh, is kind of the idea of the, the, the five pointed pentagram, the five pointed star that we've been, that we were always told, we were always told that there's earth, water, air, and fire. And that's the four kind of fundamental elements of reality dating back, you know, long before we had the periodic table. But the idea is that there's actually a fifth element that is kept secret and that's the element of spirit or the element of, I've heard it lately called a uh, realm. Some people who are kind of into like fringe thinking or fringe science are calling it like realm energy or uh, I've heard, uh, or either, e ether, ether, ether is another way. Or I think uh, dark matter is another way. You know, all these different- I call it source. Source. But at the end of the day, it's, it's something that we are just figuring out. And it's almost like, and what is taught in kind of is magic is that the, the magician understands how to work with spirit and understands that spirit gives, is, gives life to the other four. That's why you don't see it. It's invisible, but it gives life to the other elements. It's the, the animating principle. Right. So when you understand- It animates the game. Yeah, but it's invisible, but you can feel it. It's and not invisible, actually, but we, 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 but the spectrum of the eyes that we have can't see it, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's a better way to put it. <laughs> like I said, I'm still learning a lot. It's uh, there's a lot to learn. But so for people listening to this who don't, that's, I guess, what we're talking about whenever we're saying, you know, vibration or frequency or things like that. It's almost like it's an invisible wavelength of sorts that we're projecting out in all directions. And when you're sensitive to these things like you and me have developed are developing in uh, or have developed in, it's more aware. You can feel it physically. Yep. Conscious awareness. Yep. It's beautiful. How did you get started down this path learning about all this stuff? Um, you know, I, I, you know, looking back and you roll this stuff back cause you try and figure out like, where did this really begin? it's kind of been from the beginning like I remember as a kid like at school I was like this is a joke or I go to church and I'd be like what the hell is happening like how many gods are there I'm confused you know it, it started as an early age it didn't didn't make sense to me most of this stuff and I went through the motions and you know all this stuff about you know these the stories they tell you about history and all that none of it really added up much for me yeah. um so I think you know even though I wasn't conscious of it then it was already implanted in me like this game, this thing is, doesn't make any sense yeah. to me. Right. And, um, and then, you know, over the years, you know, I was always into like ancient aliens and stuff like trying to understand the, the Egyptian pyramids and why are there other pyramids all over the world and, and things like that, like that led me into flat earth. And then, um, then, you know, really just going deep, um, uh, spiritually and, and energetic, just unraveling the game altogether. I've always been kind of like a little scientist in many ways. I studied nutrition and, and um, uh, you know, sports medicine and things. So I was into bodybuilding. And so I did a lot of different experimenting with different, you know, diets and nutrition. And so it was a natural progression for me to kind of dive into this, um, like you say, esoteric world, occulted world very deeply over the last uh, five years or so. Yeah. And um, awesome. yeah, that's, that's how it's we... always fascinating how people find the occult or the esoteric information. Um, what I've told people about about it is it's almost like um, your life just gets crazy. Things just start happening in your life that you can't explain. Um, for me, it was a lot with like, with like angels, lots of stuff with angel magic or angels popping up all over the place. Not that I was like seeing angels, but just having lots of crazy experiences with oracle cards or tarot cards mm -hmm. um that i just couldn't explain crazy synchronicities weird shit happening i would ask my angel assistants to help me with something and then it would get done immediately mm -hmm. like just all this shit all this craziness that just got me to be like what the hell is going on this is wild and then i had all the law of attraction books that i was finding they were all popping up 
and I was doing a lot with psychedelics and I was learning a lot with the mushrooms and a lot of stuff there. And it was all this wild shit that was happening. And then my whole life was just taking a crazy direction. And what I, what I tell people is like, I think that's a common theme for a lot of people. It's like paranormal shit starts happening. Weird craziness starts to happen in your life. And, you're, and, yeah. and people get stuck looking for like the specific meanings. Like why am I seeing 1111 everywhere? Mm-hmm. Why am I doing, seeing this, you know, this synchronicity happens to me all the time. What does it mean? But really, I think that the conclusion we're meant to come to is just that reality is not as it appears. Right. Things are not the way you thought they were. Like flat earth is a great example. Like if you get into the flat earth conspiracy, the real conspiracy is you're just trying to say, wow, nothing is true. Mm-hmm. I know nothing. You know, I can't believe anyone unless I see mm-hmm. it for myself. Exactly. But I guess what I'm getting at is like, I found like it's when people get there, when people are like, oh man, it, things aren't the way I thought I was. That's when that's when a lot of times you find the occult. That's when you find the Kabbalion or something, and then it breaks it down for you. And it's like, okay, well, you we've convinced you that reality is not the way you appeared. Let's uh let's break it down for you and help you see how it actually works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is all part of that uh, ascension process. It, you know, we have we have to step into because all this is stuff we already know. We just forgot. Because when you come into this game, and we've been here thousands and tens of thousands of times reincarnating till we can figure out how to escape the game, essentially, that we built for ourselves, <laughs> um, is basically, you know, you've got to be able to, um, you know, we, we come in here, and the, re- the reason that every incarnation, you know, has its challenges is because we are wiped of our memory of the previous incarnation. So all this gnosis that we're coming to, and that's basically just a combination of knowledge and wisdom is stuff that we already know inside of us. It's just that we've forgotten. And it's, and it's layered up by all this emotional subconscious programming that doesn't allow us to remember the things we already know. So, you know, kind of stepping into the next layer here and this whole movement and this ascension and what is this stuff? I mean, the sun is blasting you with, you know, 40 Hertz gamma rays every day now and in re- awakening this dormant DNA, or they told you it was junk DNA, the scientists. No, you're, you're, the, your whole vessel is being lit up and it's right. unlocking all your powers and uniqueness, but you've got to be able to unravel that old programming before you can truly take advantage of, you know, your power in this game. The vessel is an instrument in the game um, and it's loaded with everything you could have imagined to produce, like you said, magic. I mean, even just rolling back to the basics of the word spelling, writing words is is magic. You know, we think of ma- a lot of times people think of magic as just dark and bad things happen from magicians and all this stuff. No, no, no. There's white magic too. It's it's leveraging your power and uniqueness to create magic in your own reality because once you can step into your unique uniqueness and your resonance in this vessel, the instrument you were given, it, you're not necessarily trapped here, that we came here for the experience. So, you know, to fully leverage it, instead of just playing out the script that you were given, that's what your birth date is. Your birthday and, and the location on this game board where you were born is, is your script. You know, if you need to go figure out what, what uh, number, what psychic number you are, you can go read a book and it'll tell you exactly your whole life. You're like, holy shit. You know, I, I've been playing out this script and I didn't even know it. Okay. You're living in a script. You you get a script so that you live it out. That's why you have a unique look, right? Mm-hmm. But the script isn't designed for you to live your whole life out. It was there to protect you from going into, you know, 1D and 2D type of deep, nasty dimensions. It's there to protect you. So right. when you can unlock your script by, by unraveling all that subconscious programming that they put into you over the years in different ways, then you can step into your uniqueness and stay in that neutrality observer standpoint and start having fun in this experience. And every day is just a blast. You're just like, you know, you're, you're watching the, the collective script play out, but it's based on your frequency. So it's actually you're getting back all this great stuff because, and, and you don't really have to even work hard for it. I mean, you, you know, you, you have to keep moving forward in this game that the game will push you forward. If you don't, that's how it works, but you don't have to be, you know, it, it isn't hard work, you know um, it's just a matter of stepping into knowing who you are and, and heading towards 
um, the better version of you every day. I mean, and just living in the now moment and enjoying that. So. That's a great way to put it. Um, to some people listening, this might sound might sound cold what we're saying. It's like because some people, I feel like sometimes what we're saying gets misconstrued as almost like oh, just uh, vibrate out of it. You know, like if if you're struggling, you know, just just increase your vibration. Someone who just lost their job or lost a family member because of this virus is going to think that that's a naive way to look at things. Um, Because from their perspective, it's all happening to them. Um, And sometimes life does happen to us. Sometimes we do get caught in that pendulum swing and we do get caught up in whatever. And it does, something does happen to us because we're influenced by archetypes or energies that are higher than us Mm -hmm. if we let ourselves be. But I guess what I'm saying is, uh, uh, to that person who's like looking for, okay, this is all great, but like, what do I do to mm-hmm. raise my vibration or yeah. whatever? How does someone actually apply this to their life, especially as it relates to COVID-19? Yeah, it's a, it's a, I really appreciate you positioning like that because I would agree it's all based on perspective, right? So if you hear me saying something and, you know, where I am today was not where I was two years ago, right? This is a huge, it, it's a process. Now, for many of us, this, the process to get, vib- get where we are vibrationally and on this frequency and being above the pendulum swing as the observer and neutrality, like it was a painful process. Like it was really tough because we were kind of like walking around alone, like uh, what the hell's happening? Yeah. Like one day you're just like, you know, depressed, like, oh my God, everything's a lie. The next day you're like, well, maybe this is going to be a brilliant miracle. You know, you're all over the place and you're unraveling these layers of your own onion as you're realizing like, yeah, wow, the church did program me. Like, yeah, wow, my parents and the government and society, they like all these things, they're not really who I truly am. You know, that's a process. But the beauty is right now is because of the energetics here on earth and because we're going through this transition, and I was just talking with uh, a friend of mine the other day, I really feel like you could take someone from, you know, down the the depths of frequency up to a completely new being in probably two months. Yeah, I've seen it happen. Because the energetics are there to support us now. Whereas before it was like, you know, you had the, 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 just the weight of the duality and Saturn, you know, Saturn's energy just dragging us down. Like, Oh my God, how are we ever going to climb out of this disaster uh, subconsciously? Whereas now it's just like, boom, you know, everything is here to support us in that transition. If we're willing to open the door that's already unlocked in front of us, you know? Yeah. So, so to kind of build on like what steps I would recommend, you've got to remove uh, meat, flesh, blood, fish, and anything with a heart. Okay, that is the one rule in this game at this stage. Okay, you are not going to uh, get out of the low frequency. You're not going to be able to move to new earth frequency. You know, new earth cannot support any low vibrational frequencies. So you have to remove the things that you cannot eat death and expect life. I mean, this is that's a vampiric mindset it's a mind virus to believe that you can eat another sentient being and expect to improve your life i mean it's just it's it's a beast it's a beast type of activity it's a low frequency activity and there's no judgment i have no judgment you can eat meat go for it it's just that you can't truly raise the 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 frequency of the vessel um in order to make the transition into new earth 5d uh, where that and that's what's really happening right now. It's a it's a whole mixing pot between now and December 21st when we have the solar flash, and we can talk about that. But really, that is the the number one thing. Like, and I highly recommend, you know, go do a fruit juice fast and do it as long as you can keep going. I mean, I've I've have a juice group on WhatsApp and support people there. Some people go 100 days, you know, on juice on fruit juice. That's going to clean the vessel out. It's going to raise your consciousness. It's going to boost the biophotonic energy in your body, which is the light between every cell and how the cells communicate between each other. It's like you've got to clean out. I mean, we've been we've been poisoning these vessels for decades. You know, you you're a young guy, so you you've got a, a head up on us. You haven't been poisoning the hell out of your body for as long as we have. So you got to you got to see that this isn't just some 30 day thing you're going to do. And amazingly, you know, everything's gonna be better. But like I said, I think if you were to juice for two months and then take the steps to, you know, start working on yourself and unraveling that subconscious programming so you can get closer to your source self, 
Okay, that's the big thing. If you can remove a lot of these emotions that have been tied up from your past, because the past doesn't exist, nor does the future. It's only the now moment. You know, you got to stay in the now day. So the big thing that I would just want to, there's a lot of steps you could take, right? And there's, we can talk about, you know, hey, what would that two month process look like? And what were some of the tools? Because now we can go quantum. We don't need to stay in this linear step-by-step -step approach that we've been living in, in this dualistic dark age arena. The, the left brain, the masculine energy is all linear, step-by-step-by-step. Step by step. We're moving into that, you know, right brain, that female, feminine energy that brings all the creativity into the mix. And that's very quantum, okay? So we could be taking 10 steps at once, get off the meat, juicing, infrared saunas, exercise, uh, massage. I mean, you could, you, you could do all kinds of different things at once to really release the true, you know, power and uniqueness that you have within you within a short amount of time. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about something that works for you, for that individual person, for their body, for what they want to do, you know, for, but ultimately, I think what you're getting at is a, a system of self-care, a system of uh, healing, something that can help you to de-stress de and detoxify. Um, and you talk about sauna. I love the sauna. Sauna is a very powerful tool. It and is. I love uh, Epsom salt baths and things yep. like that. Um, meditation, regular meditation, I think is huge. It's very important. Yep. Um, anything that can help you stay grounded and centered and not get swept up in this fear, anxiety that's gripping the collective. That's low frequency, yeah. yeah. The other thing too is what I've found is like, I think telepathy is way more real than we ever thought. And a lot of times we have thoughts in our head that don't belong to us. If we are all kind of one mind, um, I think we'd be very surprised to find out how much we are all thinking the same stuff um, and how many of the thoughts you have in your head don't really belong to you they belong to your neighbor or they belong to someone you know downstairs or they belong it's a it's a some sort of energy of fear that you're picking up on and then your human brain uh picks up that wave and it tran it feels it and it translates it into thoughts into anxieties or fears that you then take on and you feel inside of your body and i think that's a big part of it too is understanding just how interwoven and interconnected we are we all are and um and if you're not taking steps to project to protect yourself energetically you can't help but get swept up into everything because we're so connected beyond what we could possibly imagine we're so interwoven together yeah no question i mean i think just you know from the state of talking about the observer even internally you've got to be the observer of your emotions of your thoughts um, mm -hmm. to, because you're right that, you know, your thoughts, your emotions, even the vessel is not you. It's not actually it's just your name and all that. That's all just a part of this game. It's not truly who you are. So yeah, it, you know, if you're not, if you're not conscious. Okay. So here's the kind of the two pieces that I like to look at is like, you're either in conscious awareness or you're in unconscious program thinking. Mm -hmm. And most people are in unconscious program thinking, right? They're just, they're the subconscious and the ego are just supporting each other. They're good buddies, right? The, right. E the ego and the subconscious, they're just trying to, they're, and the ego is there to protect you because imagine if the ego and the subconscious programming wasn't there and you didn't have a knowing about who you truly were, it, it, you, would be in, you would be in big trouble in terms right. of the, the types of situations you would put yourself in because you would have no protection mechanism. So, you know, there's a lot of people are like, yeah, you gotta kill the ego and all this stuff. No, there's a place for this stuff that it serves you in the game, even the script. I mean, you know, having a script that would play out even if you weren't consciously aware of it and which is what most of us have done in this game is there to protect you and to keep you out of trouble. But it, you know, it's, it's nice when you can start to unravel that step into your, your power and your true uniqueness and say, Hey, ego and subconscious, I appreciate that you were there for me, but I really don't need your help anymore. I'm going to make conscious, decisions because I'm aware of who I am and where I am and and what I'm trying to accomplish and you do that with intention right so everything is intention based and so you know what I try and teach folks in business is all you have to do is put your attention on your intention hmm. that's the, that's this whole game the problem is most people are you know the intention is is the cause and your the reality you live in is the effect the problem is you're living out usually someone else's effects 
the cause of your boss, the cause of the government, the cause of society, yeah. and you're just walking through your script, living out the reality of the effects of, of their causes instead of creating your own causes by using your conscious awareness to make better choices. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, and realizing that we consent to so much at all times, like, for example, you consent to be a U.S. citizen. If you're someone who hates the government and doesn't want any part in it and hates that, uh, hates that they're paying taxes or whatever it is, um, all this stuff that people bitch about, you can withdraw, you can become a U.S. national. You don't have to be a citizen. You know, there's, that's something that we could get into in later, in larger yeah. degree, but you know what I mean? That's just one example is like, you don't, you don't have to live you in- consented. You consented. Yeah. You consented. You made the choice. You didn't realize you yeah. could- you could say no and do it a different way. They didn't want you to find that out. Yeah, but it but was always there. Can. Yeah, but you can. Um, you do consent. Like if you hate your job, guess what? You consent to going into work every single day. You mm -hmm. could at any moment quit. And uh, you could- You have free stop. will in this game. Yeah. yeah, and you might be saying, oh no, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have fucking free will. I'm always, cause this is, this was kind of the issue brought up by John Locke and people like that. And I really do think it's a big issue um, is the idea that you can choose where you want to go, but the way that the world works, just about everywhere in the world has about the same system. So in other words, you can say, because that's kind of the argument people bring up is like, oh, if you don't like it here in America, just move. And it's like, well, what are you going to do? Move to Germany or move to Canada? I mean, there, there's no place you can go where it's like, oh, here we don't have taxes. We don't have money. We do everything on a barter economy. You know what I mean? Like, no, like you can move to some fucking, your, your, your choices are find a better version of this system, um, you know, win at the game, win in the system, and then buy your own private island or something like that. That's option two. <laughs> option three is join a hippie commune or something. And then option four is like become a hermit. Like, yeah, you could go live in fucking Alaska by yourself and no one's going to fuck with you. But like, but like, that's about it. So I think that that's a big problem right now is we need more options we need more fucking options and um you know that's why i'm excited yeah, but about you know options. yeah yeah totally and it, yeah. but i would say that a lot of people are using that as an excuse not to make better choices in their for sure lives. for sure a thousand percent no i'm with you i'm just uh i guess what i'm suggesting because is, like, because I, i'm a state national i don't i've not paid the irs i sent them a cease and desist letter they disappeared you know it, this is stuff you just have to you have to be willing to look you have to get off the boob tube and stop just being downloading all their crap and yeah. actually go out and find out what the real truth is. And then you can make better choices. The problem is you don't think you have other options mm -hmm. and you fall back on this, you know, poor me, you know, society did it to me and there's nowhere I can go and it just is what it is. And I'm just going to keep it. You know, that's, that's the mentality. That's that low frequency mentality. And you're just living in the effects of their causes. And these are all magicians that have set up all these systems you know, they're, they're, they know this stuff deep and they've, they've raveled us into so much consent. You have no idea. I mean, you know, yeah. it's unbelievable the the fraud and the, you know, the, but at the end of the day, it is about consent, you know, yeah. even, even in this realm of, you know, if you're in that low frequency and you think Bill Gates is going to stab you with something, he can't do that without your consent. So, he, yeah. you know, and they might they try and do that. all these things and, you know, all, you know, here's a gun in your face. Okay. Well, for me, shoot me, because I know I'm not this vessel anyway. Like, I don't care. Death doesn't exist. It's all in your head, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a wild ride that we're on here as a species. <laughs> so I want to talk real quick about this solar flare, because you've mentioned that a couple times. I'm interested to hear what's more on that. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, once you realize that this is an illusionary dream state that we're in, and you realize that the Earth game is on a cycle and we're moving from the the uh the age of darkness or materialism that's what this has been about and everybody got trapped in materialism and we're moving into the age of age of aquarius which is the first age of the twelve thousand whatever number of years in in a time frame uh that is the golden years new earth heaven on earth essentially right. okay and so what's happening right now is that we're you know in the coming weeks uh, there's going to be a lot of darkness that is unraveled to humanity to show them the human trafficking, the children, the sex slaves, the murdering of babies for uh, for blood and adrenochrome creation, 
all these demons they're arresting across the world. That's what this coronavirus thing is. It's much bigger than the virus. Okay, we can talk about this, but a lot of this we have to. The only way to move into new earth and heaven on earth for those that are ready to, to head in that direction and that vibration, you have to bring all darkness into light just the same way that you have to dive into your subconscious and unravel it and get rid of the darkness within you so that you can be in the light. Okay. And so that's, what's going to happen on, you know, as within, so without it's going to happen on the collective level with this whole coronavirus thing in the, in the coming days and weeks where they will start to show you, Hey, we arrested all these people. Here's the confessions. Here's what was going on Here's hundreds of thousands of children that were under the ground being tortured, murdered, raped and you know that's what all these hospitals that are empty and all this stuff is all about these temporary stuff that they're setting up new york and la you got the big ships there that's it's, it's the children that are coming they're pulling out of the underground they're blowing up these deep underground military bases right now after they pull the ch it, it, this stuff is so uh, and it's just a part of the game right it's a part of the script that's playing out on the physical realm so that humanity the collective consciousness can purge the darkness that has been a part of this consciousness for so long and the only way and so once we get to december this the winter solstice is basically the timeline that you've chosen based on your frequency if you see all that if you see all that you know the the stuff that's going to be shown to humanity and you're still saying honey let's let's fire up the grill and make some steaks then you've chosen to stay in the 3D dualistic timeline. And so what's gonna happen in the solar flash is you will have a huge solar flash literally across the earth and the timelines will be split permanently. So the people that chose to stay in the low frequency and do low frequency activities and they kind of fought this movement of, we're trying to pull you out into the light so that you can continue into uh, you know, new earth and, and the new age, uh, golden ages of Aquarius. And you still chose, you still used your free will to choose low frequency activities. Then you're going to stay in a 11 year calling harvest period in the 3d dualistic realm. Okay. Um, it's basically playing out the effects of your causes. Okay. And the, those, and so then that, that flash period is, that's it. You're, you know, those that were, that raised their frequency and, you know, resonated. The key in this game right now is just get, getting off the meat. That's, if you do that, you're going to make it to, to new earth. You know, your experience between now and then might still have some challenges and roller coasters, but, um, you know, you're going to make it through. That's the big key in this game right now. Um, Where do you feel like you've gotten a lot of this info? Because you're saying a lot of stuff that I'd like to, I, people would like to believe. For sure, this idea that we're closing in on these pedophiles and rapists and all this kind of stuff. If that's true, then that's awesome. Fuck yeah. But yeah. Um, I haven't seen, I've looked, I've been following the whole like uh, QAnon movement since like 2016. Mm -hmm. I don't buy it too much. I don't know if I, I don't, let me put this, I don't buy this idea that President Trump and some secret group of 4 chaners are poised to take over, the, you know, to, to save humanity. Now, I could buy into the idea of, you know, there being an undercover op, for sure, to do all that, but uh, I don't buy that Trump's involved. You know what I mean? All that bullshit. Um, that's my take on it. But uh, what I'm getting at is I haven't seen a lot of credible sources saying that, because I see a lot of hearsay. I see a lot of people who are uh, seeing information and interpreting it mm -hmm. in different ways. And there's all sorts of interpretations, you know, because I guess what I'm saying is on the one hand, there's there's what you said. Um, and then on the other hand, there's people who are saying basically the exact same thing, but from a doom and gloom perspective of like, oh no, this is the new world order taking over. And they might even, some people, I've even seen people being like, oh, don't believe this QAnon shit. That's the new world order trying to get you to stay inside and think that everything's being taken control of and actually you and me need to get out on the streets. And you know, that's them tricking us to think that they've got it covered. So like, I've even seen, I guess what I'm saying is like, I've even seen the conspiracy theory to the conspiracy theory, where it's like, oh, even that, you know what I mean? So I, I, how, why do you believe this so strongly? Yeah, so great question. Happy yeah. to give you some resources. So you're absolutely right. 
because what's playing out right now is that based on your frequency, you are observing what you, what you believe. That's the beauty of right now, okay? And you, right now is a, you can shift it, okay? So you have the power to shift what you see, okay? So th that's why I'm telling you, this is a very malleable experience because what's happened right now is this isn't like, oh, okay, you know, we're still in 3D, you know, the third dimension, dualistic, you know, uh, hermetic principle-based reality. Uh, and then one day we're just going to be in 5D and we're going to be dancing around mushrooms and, and, you know, loving each other. You know, <laughs> it's not like that. The 5D energy is already here. And, and, and you can be experiencing the new earth and heaven on earth already. Okay. It, it's, you have to choose with intent to raise your frequency, get off the meat, start, you know, working on yourself. Like you said, self-care is so important right now because then it will start to project that new earth frequency right now okay and so what you just said is exactly right however you see it is what is actually playing out it's not and and so what's happening is the collective based on the percentage of the collective is where we go like we can talk about the calendar like you just back up a little bit and say well you know we got this 12 month calendar and then december is the last month right well december is 10 deca is 10 okay so it's all jacked up. The calendar has been jacked up for, you know, thousands of years. Okay. But is, but we as a collective have agreed to use that calendar. And so that makes it the actual, the actual thing that's playing out. Okay. So right. what's happening right now is that this is this, this malleable area of the timelines where the collective is on different parts of the pole. And a certain percentage of the of the two poles, the ones that are going to play out, who's on the 3D timeline, what is that going to look like? And who's going to the 5D timeline, what does that look like? That's being figured out in the days that we're sitting in our house reflecting on all this stuff. Okay, yeah. so the stuff you're seeing is whatever it is. I agree. I see it too. I see the people on the 3D side like, oh, yeah, we're toast. You know, this was coming. I, you know, I've been studying this for 30 years and you know, this whole script that's been playing out in duality and the darkness is finally here to take us all and stab us and do all these that's things, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, I, uh, my friend no, Jackson. But I'm on, the, I'm on the other side. I'm saying, hey, I'm the observer, remember? I'm the observer above the pendulum swing. I'm in neutrality. I'm not attached to this timeline or that timeline. And I'm looking at people that, are, that channel the Palladians, the Archurians, I'm looking at QAnon stuff. I'm looking at this. I'm listening to, and I'm just, I'm just seeing how the big script is playing out with my frequency, and I'm observing that. And I've been studying this stuff long enough to I understand the rules of the actual game that I'm in, and so I'm projecting those to you on this call, and I'm helping you understand that if you are seeing a timeline of doom and gloom, then you're, there's an element in your subconscious that's resonating with that. And so it's, cre yeah. it's going to create that. So again, just staying in observation mode, you can see both of those timelines playing out and both of them are correct. Because if you're at a lower frequency, you're gonna naturally attract the fear and anxiety based reality, which is yeah. that 3D timeline. I feel like uh, from my perspective um, as to like what is the most likely course of action or outcome, I feel like the more likely course of action would be that there'd be many timelines because it's almost like we're talking about two. Number one is, you know, heaven on earth timeline. Number two is new world order takes over. Timeline. <laughs> yeah. But what about timelines three, four, five, six, and seven, where it's something completely different happens. And I feel oh. like, I feel like that's where I'm being drawn more is not so much to be like, cause, cause people tell me all this shit about, um, you know, the government's taken over, New World Order's taken over, blah, blah, blah. I don't buy it. I was in the army for six years. I just got out a few months ago. My dad's worked for the government for, his, you know, 25 years. Uh, I'm, I know tons of people in the military, in the government at all levels. Um, I've worked at NATO for periods of time. I've seen, worked for generals. I've seen like high level military shit. Um, and I'm telling you, like, if there was some sort of like, oh, we're going to, have martial law and vaccinate everyone 
the military are, will be the first people to be like, uh, no, we're not. Uh, <laughs> that is an illegal order. You know what I mean? Like the military is the most, some of the most right wing fucking conservative uh, yeah. Bill of Rights, Constitution loving Americans, you're gonna fucking find. You know what I mean? Like that's what, and here's the thing. I've met the most of the people that I've met who are in that, in that fear-based mentality of what we're talking about. Yeah. I've met a majority of the people like that in my life when I was in the military. So many people in the military are like, oh my God, what happens if, you know, the government, <laughs> the, there's a, some marsh, there's some, you know, takeover. I'm like, guys, you're the ones who would be doing the takeover. Uh, exactly. <laughs> like for, for real, it's at that level where I'm like, people in the military freak out, get on these conspiracy bandwagons about all this shit. I'm like, guys, you're the ones that are scared who would be coming to take their guns. Stuff yeah, no, like, that. like yeah, so, I, think, yeah. I don't buy it. I'm like, no, the military, like, there might be some crazy psychos who would go along with it, but 95 to 99% of the military would be like, uh, oh, fuck no, we're not following that order. That's unconstitutional. That's an illegal order. We're taught to not obey illegal orders. As officers, we're given classes on here are illegal orders. If the government or if someone ever tries to give you an order that sounds like this, you have a legal responsibility to not follow that order. Here's what you do. Here's where you go to report them. Stuff like that. Like, no, <laughs> it's not how it works. We're not, the military is not as fucking blind as people think for better. And sometimes that's a bad thing because then sometimes they're incompetent because people in the military don't fucking do what they're told because they, you know, <laughs> they have more free will. People in the military have more free will than, than you might think, right. which, is, which is good. But also sometimes privates don't clean the fucking vehicles when you tell them to. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? <laughs> you get what, that, that's my spiel on it. I just yeah, feel like and that's your, yeah. there's many timelines here. There's many possibilities. I would agree that, that it's not just two. And I, that's my point is that right now, how it actually, and it, this is one of those frustrations you can see in both timelines where everybody's like sitting at home, like, when are we going to move forward? When are we going to figure it out? Which time yeah. is basically like, when are we going to figure out which the, what is the timeline? Where's all the evidence? Where's this? Where's that? And it's very anecdotal right now, right? And it's because basically the the game itself is waiting to figure out everybody's collective frequency so that it can choose one of those timelines based yeah. on where you're at. Because there's too many timelines uh, right now to where it can solidify in the collective consciousness to play out. I think that what's going to happen, the most this is the, the most likely course that I see us happening, but I'm, I'm very optimistic about these things, is I think that shit will hit the fan in some capacity, whether it's, oh, the government tries to declare martial lockdown or, oh, the fucking, you know, it looks like we're going to be in a, we're going to be jumping a hundred years back in time, you know, like the whole fucking grid's going to crash. We're going to go back to the 1850s, you know, all of a sudden. Um, I, you know, something terrible of that variety. Um, I think the more like the most likely course of action is I think people would be pleasantly surprised to find that everyone here would much rather unite together as a tribe and as a community. You got it. Then, oh, we're gonna have Mad Max. It's almost like people are like, oh, if shit falls apart, it's gonna be Mad Max. It's gonna be a, po a post-apocalyptic nightmare. Like, no guys, probably you're gonna finally go talk to your neighbors down the street and see if they have any extra toilet paper to share and maybe you can trade them some of your canned goods because everyone's out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure we're not going to go right to, oh, we're going to be killing each other in the street over toilet paper or canned goods. Like, no, I think I think there'll be a couple of, say, a lot of things we go through before we hit there, you know, before it's like a fucking Mad Max nightmare <laughs> scenario. Yeah, and I like, think that, the, that those scenarios that you're referring yeah. to that have played out in movies and all this stuff over the years. It's that a they've... warning almost of what not to do. It's like, don't do this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I think that that's going to play out for those that chose, you know, after the solar flash and they're still in 3D duality, that, that those scenarios will play out for them. You know, they'll play out the effects of that um, because they've projected that. And, you know, they've, they've taken, they've made, it, made choices even after all this stuff that's going to come, disclosure and bring the darkness into the light. There's going to be folks that still play out that timeline. But I would agree, like, hey, I think most people, and again, it, it's based on our own, projection our own perspective right 
most people are in love, you know, in the frequency of love, gratitude, appreciation, forgiveness. Um, all the, that's, that's the high frequency you want to be in. Like, Hey, look at anything, even, you know, somebody, um, you know, grotesque things. Like you got to love that and say, you know what, that showed me what I am not. Right. So you're basically who you are until you see and who you are not. Okay, so the key is like when you see something in your reality or somebody, you know, does something to you, it's a reflection of your own frequency. So if we can stay in that, in that uh, frequency of love and appreciation and gratitude and forgiveness, even when we see the most horrific things playing out in our own reality, because we see, hey, you know what, I love that. You just showed me a part of myself that I didn't realize I had in me. And yeah. I love the fact that you, you showed that to me. Thank you. I love that. Then you transmute that. Okay. That's what this is about. It's about transmuting those energies that no longer serve you. That's what's happening right now in the collective consciousness is all these energies are going to come to the surface that you probably, some of which you didn't even know was within you. It's going to show you a, a version of yourself that you need to transmute. But if you can stay in that resonance of love and appreciation and forgiveness for yourself, for others and all things, then you're going to be hot, flying high and you're going to see this new earth, heaven on earth already playing out for you. That is the key in this journey, okay, is to realize that everything that, that you see in the reality is a reflection of yourself. All is self. Every person that you deal with is a version of you and they everybody responds to you based on your own frequency. I go to the grocery store and I, I'm overly nice and I'm not doing it, you know, trying to be a goofball. I'm doing it because, hey, I really appreciate you helping me out today. I'm excited about seeing you again the next time I come to the store. You have an amazing rest of your afternoon. Yeah. That's how I operate. And then what comes back to me is so beautiful, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've heard of, uh, Sort of the platinum rule it's like a slight twist on the golden rule it's uh do unto others as you would have them do to you because they are you living a different life exactly i like the platinum rule um but hey man that's i think it. that's a beautiful spot to end it on um we're gonna do the secret show so if you're watching this on youtube or facebook you can go to the podcast feed and we're gonna do a little bit more talking about some crazy shit so we're gonna take us we're gonna talk about some weird shit now on the on the secret show we've been, we've been keeping it tame here but um but before we do that is there anything you want to promote tell us about the the event that you're doing yeah i want you to check out the business transformation experience i've got uh, early bird tickets right now it's gonna be a full week in costa rica in june and in august check out bte.life or business transformation experience.com and you're gonna love what you see that's awesome. So you said bte.life. Mm -hmm. Sweet. So if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, or if you're listening to the podcast, just look in the uh, description for this and I'll put the links down there. So if you want to check it out, uh, just look down below and you'll see it. But uh, Justin, you're the man. We're going to hop over on the podcast feed and do the secret show. You're the man.